Today we have a GameCube that has some trouble reading discs. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. So this time it loaded up the game, that's unusual. And black screen, and it throws the error. That was kind of weird, usually it doesn't even get that far. It's been stuck on the GameCube logo for about 40 seconds now. So we got a new error this time. This time it doesn't think there's a disc in there at all, but we know that there is. So we saw this cube failed to read the disc in three different ways. One of those times it actually appeared to get into the starting screen of the game, but then failed. And that gives me some confidence that I'll be able to fix it. Maybe it's just a laser power adjustment type of thing. We'll get in there and see what we find. We just have these four screws and we're gonna use the four and a half millimeter game bit or inverted Torx driver. Oh, should have taken that game out. Don't forget to do that. At this point, there are quite a bit of things we're going to need to remove. I'll start with the faceplate. Watch that ribbon cable. I'll just pull that out. Set this to the side. I think we're going to have to remove both these cables. So there's a red and black wire one. And the other one for the fan. With those cables out, we can get these two screws. This one and this one. There's two clips for the back plate as well, which I'll undo now and that we can just move to the side. I should have done that right away. With those two screws out, now the whole fan module can come out. Now there are just a bunch of screws along the perimeter we need to remove. And there's four smaller size screws up here we don't want to forget. So these little metal plates actually come off. We're going to take each one and set them to the side, make sure we don't lose them. We should at this point be able to lift up the whole drive assembly, just like that. And this can get moved to the side. We have six more small screws to be able to get under this plate. Now we can take this off. And this is what we needed to get to. What we want to do now is measure the resistance of this potentiometer, which adjusts the power of the laser that reads the disc. The lower the resistance, the more power. I think it should be something like 450 ohms. When we measure, we want to be on the middle left side and on the lower right side, those two points. If there's a point on the upper right side, we don't need that one. So I'm getting a flickering, inconsistent, no reading. And when I see something like that, it might not be that this needs to be adjusted at all and instead we just have bad connections to the board. I'm gonna bust up the soldering iron and reflow all the solder joints on this potentiometer, and then we'll check it again. So I'm gonna apply some flux to the entire thing. And then I will simply just touch each corner, each solder joint with the tip of the iron. And that's it, let's see if we can get a reading now. First though, we wanna clean that flux off with alcohol. And air duster. Dry it up. So reflowing those solder joints definitely did the trick. We have our connection back. We're getting about 600 ohms, which is on the high end of the range. I want it to be between 450 and 600. So we'll make a fine adjustment to this screw and check it again. To do that, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver bit with my bare hands. I just made about a 16th of a turn counterclockwise. That gets us to 488. I think that's a slightly too low, so I'll give it a minor adjustment back up. Really doesn't take much. Now we're at 506, which I think I'm good with. So this potentiometer now should be connected and at the proper resistance. What I want to do now is just kind of dry fit this all back together and give it a quick test before we put all those screws back in. I think that might be as far as we should need to go. I've got to hold this switch back here that tells the cube the disc tray is closed. Looks like it's working great now. Let's get it back together. Katie, I fixed it! Now we need to take a few things back out and then we'll do the reassembly montage. 
Well, I guess that fan could have stayed plugged in the whole time. All right, let's get it all back together. Whoops, forgot the disc. And there you have it. We are back in business with this GameCube. Everything seems to be working just fine. We can read our discs again, and we're happy about it. Well, good fix. Glad to see that thing running normally again. If you have a similar issue like this, I hope this video can help you out. That's all I got, and thanks for watching.